What's going on guys? So this might be an interesting one for a lot of people because it's kind of a different brand. This is called a Wilderness Ultralight. Looks like there's a window up front, but there's not. This is a relatively long travel trailer as well, but there's some interesting aspects about it that you might like. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, before we kick things off, let's take a look at the numbers. So this has a gross vehicle weight rating of 9,600 pounds. This thing's kind of heavy. Has a cargo capacity of 2,102 pounds. Rides on E-rated 15 inch tires. And this is definitely a travel trailer. I would say is more along the three quarter ton line as far as towability. I would definitely would not put something like this behind a half ton truck. Has cable driven slides back here. By doing that, you can see the bottom is pretty much completely clean except for the power connections that go through. This rides on a 10 inch I-beam frame. So it's a relatively tall frame for a travel trailer. That's a good thing. It has all your connections here for your waist. Coming around. This has the wide spaced axles. It's supposed to help eliminate that porpoise feeling whenever you go over bumps and you're on the highway has a relatively low-end tire. I definitely recommend replacing those tires after a couple thousand miles. And it has good-looking aluminum wheels. Coming around further, you can see it has another slide back here. On this side, this has incandescent lights. You can tell by the bulb base that's in there. Wired for a Furion wireless backup camera has your outside shower connection, city water connection, and cable back here, and there is a mount for a barbecue grill. Let's open this up right here and take a look at the outside kitchen. I do like the thicker baggage doors. Makes the, the actual hatch a lot sturdier, especially if it's windy outside. I love the fact that they have a sink here. A lot of manufacturers have moved away from having sinks in their RVs, and I really like the fact that there's a sink here, plus this really cool shelf that pulls out. It's a very, very nice outside kitchen. Has a not-so-micro micro refrigerator. Nice storage drawer here for utensils and things as well. Big fan of this outside kitchen. Love the fact that they have the sink back here, plus they have this little flip-around grill connection. Again, very thick baggage doors. Here's your second entrance, steel steps. This has the wide track suspension. Coming around this way, let's take a look at the front storage area before we hop inside. King Kong size storage. This actually does have a pretty good size storage. On this side, it's about three feet wide. Looks like it's about 20 inches tall. Definitely a lot of room in here. And it's more comparable to units with drop frames as far as travel trailers, so that's really nice. Has the power stabilization jacks on the front and back. Let's take a look inside of this Heartland Wilderness Ultralight 3350DS. This has a Yeti sidewall construction up to twice as thick as the competition, which is really cool. And you can kind of tell, feels to be about two inches thick. Stepping inside, this has more of a traditional travel trailer layout to it. Nothing crazy different here. Doesn't have an island, more of like an L-shaped kitchenette. Has a good size 12 volt refrigerator though. Definitely have to admit that. Let's open this up real quick so we can take a closer look inside. Gotta peel off this tape. It's a very good size refrigerator actually. Very nice. Let's take a look in the bathroom real quick. It's a fair size bathroom, and this is more of a half bath actually, because there's no shower inside of here. You have your own entrance and exit here as well. Nice size shelf and a good amount of room in front of the toilet, so that's really nice. Coming back here, nice big pantry area, storage. Plus you got a drawer here as well. You have your fuse panels, everything here, and you have a central vac hookup, which is nice. Coming into the back bunkhouse, looks like a curtain fell down during travel, but these are simply those little metal rods that kind of pop into place, so that's nothing to worry about. Nice size top bunk. I don't know how you would get into it though. 
I guess you would climb the shelves here, or maybe there's a ladder somewhere here. But has a good size bunk up top. Nice back window here, and then you have a flip up bunk right here, and then also bunks that turn out into a larger bed below. So that's pretty nice. Coming back, good size dinette. Sleeping perspective, two, four, five. I really wouldn't put two people here. And then six, seven, eight, nine. You could sleep up to nine people in this thing. It's an interesting lighting fixture. Coming back, this is where your entertainment center would go. So I would definitely use an articulating style mount. Otherwise, you'll be craning your neck to the left to watch TV. And I know that's kind of a pet peeve of mine and a lot of other people. So not a bad setup, just not the most convenient. Now, if you put a good pull-out articulating mount right there, I think you're in better shape. But if you have a really large TV and it's pulled out, it could kind of interfere with people walking in and out, or they just have to be careful. Coming up here looks to be a full bath. So you have your full bathroom up here, corner shower. If I move this out of the way, you'll see your sink and mirror medicine cabinet. The skylight is a little bit different tone. It looks like it kind of yellows out the light coming through it. Nice size shower stall though. Coming into the bedroom. King size bed. So this is a question I get asked all the time. Do they make travel trailers with king size beds? They do make travel trailers with king size beds. They are kind of rare to find, but they do have them. And this is an example of one. So you get a really, really good size bed, which means this travel trailer is on a wide body. So it's a wider unit than most travel trailers, which is also going to be appealing to a lot of people. Now, you don't have a tremendous amount of room on each side. It looks to be about 8 inches, maybe 10 inches on each side. This side's a little bit wider, or at least more space is provided to get on the bed. And you would have to be a little careful with this overhang here. It's off the top of the bed, maybe 2.5 feet. So you don't want to bump your head into that. But... The fact that you can get a king size bed in a room, and this is a full king size bed, this thing's very long, in a room with extra room at the end of the bed, so you can actually walk by it. That is the standout feature on this. This is definitely a longer travel trailer for sure. This is probably close to 37 feet long, but they give you a king size bed and they don't give you that really weird wall here that gives you room on each side to go around the bed, but at the end of the bed, you have no room at all. This is kind of the redeeming factor, the fact that you have an excellent bedroom in a travel trailer, because typically that's where you lose out, especially when you have a bunkhouse. Anyways, I'd love to hear your feedback on this unit. This is a really cool unit. I'm not a big fan of cable-driven slides, but there's only two of them. This is a relatively large slide, so I really wish they would have used like a rack and pinion slide here, but I hear from a lot of people that they've had absolutely no problem with their cable-driven slides. Now, they don't have a price posted on this unit, my guess, and I could be wrong, but I'll go to their website and check it out, but my guess is that this is going to be in the mid-30s in terms of asking price, but we'll find out. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.